Hello everyone, today we'll be talking about a recent and very important event that happened in Russia, an unsuccessful military coup by Evgeny Prigozhin and his private military company Wagner. In your opinion, how many years in prison deserves a person who has created a military coup in the amount of 15,000 people, killing 15 soldiers, threatening the security of a state? Well, probably many years, but in fact, Prigozhin and his PMC didn't get any punishment, and you probably heard about this because it was all over the media. It was immediately claimed to be the beginning of the civil war in Russia, but it was just a one-day event. So today I will share with you my reaction, my feelings, and how Russian people the government and propaganda reacted to this. So let's remember what happened on that day. Evgeny Prigozhin already had a lot of tensions with the Russian Minister of Defense Sergei Shoigu and the Chief of General Staff Valery Gerasimov. He criticized them a lot for not providing him and his uh, combatant with enough ammunition. Shoigu! Gerasimov! So, on the 23rd of June, Prigozhin sent a voice message to his Telegram channel. Imagine starting a civil war with just a voice message. And there he claimed that the Ministry of Defense destroyed his uh, PMC's camp by missiles, which uh, turned out to be not true, but he cited it as a reason why he is starting his march of justice. On the next day, on the June 24th, Prigozhin and a group of mercenaries in the amount of 15,000 people captured the large city on the south of Russia, Rostov-on-Don, and captured the southern military district headquarters. And they didn't meet any resistance. The police actually escaped the city. And from there, Prigozhin advanced to Moscow. He claimed that he wanted Shaigu and Gerasimov to be turned over to him. Шойгу только что трусливо бежал из Ростова. В 21.00 он бежал трусливо, как баба. They didn't meet any resistance from the local authorities. The only thing is that they started to dig holes in the asphalt to prevent tanks from passing. On their way, Prigozhin and his PMC also shot two military planes of the Russian Ministry of Defense and they killed about 15 people. Prigozhin continued his march of justice to Moscow, but 200 kilometers away from Moscow, they stopped and turned away. What happened? Vladimir Putin, with all his repressions and foreign agents' laws, really made sure that Russia is a sovereign state that is not interfered by presidents of other countries, but all this ended up in a president of another country, Belarus, negotiating with Prigozhin, calling him, talking to him, and somehow, according to this settlement, Prigozhin and his Wagner group will be able to go to Belarus and stay there safely. This was announced by Dmitry Peskov, the press secretary of Putin, and here I want to point out the language that was used. So Peskov said that Prigozhin will go to Belarus. In the Russian version, Peskov used the phrase Prigozhin уйдет в Беларусь. So he used the verb уйдет, which literally means will go. And I looked it up how this word was translated to English and on different sources it shows words such as depart, to Belarus, leave for Belarus, go to Belarus, move to Belarus. That's fine. But in Russian, this word уйдет cannot be used in that context. It cannot be used in the context of a person going to another country. The word уйдет has the connotation of uh, going somewhere on food. 
And why I'm concentrating on this too much? My conclusion is that the Russian language doesn't have a better word for this situation because if Peskov used the word ulitet to fly on the plane or uyekhat to uh, depart on a car or отправиться, which is the general meaning to go, it implies that he was doing it easily on some means of transport without any resistance. That's why the word уйдет, well, again, it sounds really inappropriate here and I think that it is hilarious that the Russian language doesn't even have a word to describe this hilarious situation that happened on the 24th of June. Actually, in the Russian language, there are many examples of double speak used by the Russian state-owned media. For example, when I was working in Batsumi here in Georgia, I saw posters about the Russian propaganda and uh, there it shows perfectly. It's like a translation from Kremlin to Russian. This is a reference to the new speak used by the Russian propaganda. Here it says, not liberators, but occupiers, not a clap, but explosion, not negative growth, but a decline. As I said, Prigozhin yet wasn't punished. In fact, a criminal case was opened against Prigozhin, but in three days it was closed. But I want to point out that still one person was taken accountable. It was Suravikin, which was another really important general. As of today, the middle of July, he just disappeared and nobody knows where he is. So there are rumors that Suravikin was aware of the mutiny and that he was helping Prigozhin and that he betrayed Putin and now they are going to put him to jail. I don't know, we will see. I don't know much about this person. Again, a disgusting person. And now let's talk who is Prigozhin. After serving several years in prison for robbery and theft in the 80s, he was released and started catering business, focusing on upscale and rich restaurants, and that's how he got close with Vladimir Putin. Also, he was in charge of a so-called factory of trolls, or officially Internet Research Agency. That agency was hiring people to create fake accounts on different social media and write comments on online newspaper websites or on their YouTube videos. Comments that were in favor of the actions of the Russian government, Kremlin, against Western countries. I saw some comments from them myself and it is easy to distinguish them because in the Russian language, for example, we have different endings for verbs dependent on gender. So often there were comments with verbs written with feminine endings but the profile picture and the name showed that this comment was from a man and it was really hilarious to see. I saw such comments under Shaman's videos and so on. In 2014, Prigozhin founded the PMC Wagner and it was used in different parts of the world to support the Russian proxy forces. So it was used in African countries, in Syria, and in the eastern Ukraine. And in 2022, Wagner also played an important role in the invasion to Ukraine. And for this, Prigozhin hired inmates from the Russian prison in exchange for freedom. But many, I would say the majority of the people who went from prisons to the front line didn't return back. But there actually are cases of former prisoners who returned home and of course they returned with PTSD and given that they are former prisoners they are committing horrible things and there are already cases when men killed old women or their wives returning from the war. And this is really sad, I think, such a tendency will be happening in Russia more often. One more thing that I heard about Wagner was the situation when they executed their former mercenary who first was captured by Ukrainians but then returned to Wagner and while in Ukraine he expressed his wish to fight on the side of Ukraine and for this treason he was executed by his own combatants of Wagner and there is a video 
of this man being murdered by a sledgehammer. As Pergosian comments on that, he said, a dog deserves a dog's death. Later, there was another situation and another video like this, where they are killing their own mercenary with a sledgehammer, but later it turned out to be a fake video and Prigozhin appeared on public with that very man and I don't know what this was for, probably he wanted to use the sledgehammer as a symbol of his power because later Prigozhin sent a hammer to one Russian politician, Sergei Mironov, a member of the Just Russia party. And Mironov was really happy receiving such a gift, and he said that he will use this hammer to fight the Nazis who want to destroy Russia or something like this. Another famous video of Prigozhin was the video where he is standing against the background of dead bodies of his PMC combatants and he is demanding ammunition from Gerasimov and Shaigu and at this point that phrase became a meme and it was really disgusting for me to see him standing literally on the background of dead bodies and this just shows the level of Russian politicians today, how they're sending their messages. But worth to say that actually I was deceived by a very eloquent and smart PR company of Prigozhin. I believed in his persona, I believe that he is so blunt and sharp. But as some Russian political scientists pointed out, all these things, the background, the sledgehammer, were just created by his PR team. And in fact, he is very wise and he knew how to play along mindsets of the very Z Russians. Because Prigozhin and his PMC is supported by this core of the Russian population who supports the war. They are also called Turbo Patriots. And apparently they saw a stronger leader in him because Prigozhin is actually doing something while the Ministry of Defense is just sitting in the warm cabinets and is not experiencing the harshness of the war. So returning to the military coup, what was the reason of this? I'm not an expert in this, but from what I gathered from some Russian political scientists, Prigozhin felt that he, it was his only way to stay alive, basically, because he already had problems with Shegu and Gerasimov, and they were going to dismiss him, so to claim his power and to show that his mercenaries are on his side was his last resort. So now I want to talk about the response, how people reacted to this military coup. The police of Rostov-on-Don did nothing, they just left the city, and when they returned to the city after the Wagner group left, they were greeted not favorably by people, people were shouting Pazor, which means shame, to the policemen, and how people of Rostov reacted themselves. There were different opinions, some people greeted Wagner and even brought sandwiches to them, some people treated this as just some nice holiday and walked with their families and took pictures of their children sitting on tanks, you know, they like to do this, especially on the 9th of May, the day of victory. Some city residents even tried to argue with Wagner, but here are responses of people questioned by the Doxa journal. For example, Pavel says that uh, he don't know if uh, this mutiny will be successful and uh, it's obvious to him that the majority of the society is on the Prigozhin side, the Russian government is weakened completely and it has a big hit on its image. Another person said, aren't we just hostages of this situation from the very beginning of this special military operation? And here I kind of agree with this person. Another person criticized people who are bringing sandwiches to the Wagner group. And this person says that she wants the Wagner to leave Rostov. She did not expect them. She had her plans for the weekend. 
Also, the core fan base of Wagner took pictures with Prigozhin and greeted them. These people represent, as I said, those turba patriots. They advocate for the war and they want the war to be even more successful because the Russian government is doing not enough, according to them. Putin was silent on the eve of the military coup and in the evening of the 23rd of June, he just congratulated the Russian youth on the Youth Day on the Kremlin website, that's it. But the next day, he posted a video where he called Prigozhin a traitor, persuaded them to stop. And how did the Russian propaganda react to the coup? At first, they didn't say anything because they still did not get any instructions from Kremlin. But in the next days, when these journalists got instructions from the Kremlin, they play the card of discrediting Prigozhin for his corruption, for stealing the money, which is funny because actually it was the Russian government who openly gave money to the PMC. And also the propaganda tried to compensate this total shame, pretending that the coup was stopped not by the interference of a president of a neighboring country, but by the Russian people themselves. They rallied around our president, defended their motherland, and stopped the rebels. Мятеж поддержали только враги, а вот народ не поддержал. Народ пошел за президентом. И нужно четко понимать, да, реакция на то, что случилось, была осознанной реакцией зрелой страны и зрелого общества. И это видно из абсолютной консолидации вокруг президента, когда и губернаторы регионов заявили о своей поддержке его действий, и силовики, которые работали, стараясь минимизировать вероятность худшего сценария, и просто люди. Because there is a huge apathy in the Russian society. Again, people cannot do anything. And I think it is a good example of uh, the level of support for Putin among the people. I want to show you the video taken on the concert devoted to some patriotic holiday where there are so many people, they are waving the Russian flag. But as I said many times, people who go to that concerts are not volunteers. And you can see that people there look really lost. They cannot explain why they are there. They basically came here to eat free buckwheat. Защитники отечества в тяжелейших условиях отстаивают честь всей страны. Ну как что, мы узнали, что надо ехать. Мы поехали. Ну, мы на работе нам сказали, что есть такая возможность. Хотите, автобус выделяют. Приглашение от нашего вуза университета. Мне даже два куска мяса попалось. Очень замечательно. And speaking of how the Russian population react to this, I want to cite one uh, blogger. He made a poll on his Telegram channel of how people felt during the mutiny. There were multiple choices and 60% of people answered that they felt anxiety, but 58%, almost the same amount, said that they were interested. That's basically explain the whole situation. Anxiety, but interest. 31% felt fear, and some people also felt elation, anger, joy. It's just uh, 9,000 people who participated in this poll, and it's mostly, I guess, young people, mostly anti-war, people, but I think that it is pretty illustrative. As for me, when I woke up on the June 24th and read the news, I was really unused by this. I felt joy and excitement and interest. Oh wow, finally something is happening. I imagine it like this, the ideal scenario. Prigozhin enters Moscow, fucking bombs Kremlin, killing Putin. Although Putin is not living in Kremlin, he is hiding somewhere in a bunker in his residence. And then Kremlin, in response, hits Prigozhin's PMC. All the evils are killed. Of course, it is a very naive and unrealistic 
scenario. But I was really happy that finally something is going on and that the Putin regime will be weakened. For me, it's just perfect situation. Two evils are fighting. Let them fight it out and kill each other, hopefully. You know, when you live in this situation for a long time, where you cannot influence anything, where you suffer, where your friend and relative suffer and where people in other countries suffer from the actions of your government and again you are humiliated by this government and abused and repressed and exiled when something is finally happening it gives you hope that was my reaction to the whole event and i think it will go down into russian history as a, a very shameful day for the current russian government and this situation showed us that the russian government is actually weak and is easy to scare because the russian security forces are really good at doing what they're used to do which is chasing people in the narrow streets of moscow beating them up putting them to the after zag and then giving them real sentences for participating in a rally because putin is a gopnik and he and people who surround him are used to the language of power but when they meet an equal enemy they are scared they don't know what to do they ask a president of another country for help and it really shows that this regime is weak for many years the government was destroying the russian civil society by claiming activists and just charity organizations as foreign agents, forcing people to exile to other countries by killing people, jailing people. But they were doing this to us, to ordinary Russian citizens. But they are very scared when they see another criminal like them turning against them. I think that this photo perfectly described this. It was taken in Rostov when a tank of Wagner Group stuck in the middle of the city. And here on the wall you can see a poster advertising a circus show. And speaking of funny photos, now I want to show you some memes that appeared after this mutiny. And there were a lot of memes. Happy military mutiny day. Trust nobody, not even yourself. Ministry of Defense of Russia, we must pay tribute. The counteroffensive of Ukraine began in an unexpected place. And this dish is called the Civil War. I just hope both teams lose. Yeah, exactly, that was my reaction to this. Prigozhin in his headquarters in the evening of June 23rd. Yeah, I think this is exactly how Prigozhin and his uh, group were planning this. Memes in case Prigozhin wins, memes in case Shaigu wins, memes in case reptilians restart the simulation. Finally, at least somebody from the Russian opposition is not just talking, but is taking an action. I didn't expect that Prigozhin will be so outraged by the new law against transgender people, but okay. Well, this is actually a very sad meme. The Russian state Duma adopted a bill banning surgical operations aimed at changing the sex of a person and they also banned transgender people from changing the gender marker in the documents and from adopting children. It is obvious that when the government is becoming fascist, they will start from some minority group and they will expand their repressions. Continue on watching the memes. So here you see the representatives of the degenerous West, the transgenders, the NATO block, apparent number two, apparent number one, and collective West. And they are screaming, oh, we didn't manage. They didn't even have the opportunity to destroy Russia. Russia has destroyed Russia itself. Another happy military coup day. And here you can see Shegu Putin, when a liberal went out on a single picket, puts them to prison for 15 years. Also Putin, when a man with a 25,000 army started a mutiny and captured several large cities. I forgive you. So these were the memes and I think that such a big amount of them can be explained by the fact that 
people didn't know what to do and the only coping mechanism for them was black humor and people were just laughing at this shameful situation and trying to calm themselves down somehow. And now I want to devote some time to talk about my recent updates. Actually, there are no updates. I just live in Georgia, drinking coffee and thinking what I'm going to do with my life. But I want to share how I have been feeling recently. There are some people who make videos on YouTube and showing that Russia is actually good. Life here is good. They're full stocked supermarkets. What sanctions? Your sanctions don't work. And there are videos like walking in the streets of Moscow. And you can see the perfectly clean, really beautiful streets in the center of Moscow with well-dressed people, beautiful women. And of course, people who film this video make sure that they focus their cameras on the bodies of these women. And also there are Westerners who make videos saying that Russia is based. Russia is not the West with its degeneracy. It is totally disgusting for me because of course, the center of Moscow will be nice. But if you look at the rest of the country and how people are persecuted for their political opinion, for writing a comment, for posting a picture, and while I understand people who are talking about their daily life, I don't understand people who are openly working for the Russian propaganda, well, this must be their true opinion, they believe in what they are showing, but you cannot live in this country without acknowledging its bad sides. And when I watch all these videos, I feel like I don't have a voice. I feel like uh, so desperate because I saw the true shit of that country. I lived through this. I'm following the news. I see how people are suffering. And uh, that's why I want to scream. I want to show my position. And that is what is pissing me off these days. But I will try to make some videos in the future debunking these well-polished videos of Russia. Thank you for watching this long video. Write your opinion about this military coup, how it was discussed in your local media, what your politicians say about this, what you think about this. Don't forget to put like on this video if you liked it. And goodbye. Пока-пока.